put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. If the video is simply too long for you, I did record a shorter version and the link is in the description box. Grand Theft Auto 4 video game review. Nico Belic is lured with false promises to America, Liberty City specifically, from somewhere in Eastern Europe. We don't know exactly. He says it's not Russia. It might be Serbia. He certainly speaks Serbian. In my mind, it is Serbia. He just doesn't want to be, you know, connected in any way with newborn porn. The false promises that lure him there come at the hands of his cousin Roman, who insists that he has made it in America, and certainly Nico will be able to as well. But as soon as Nico arrives, he finds that, yeah, not so much. It's he has a job, but it's not exactly, yeah, it's not so high. He, he owns a taxi company, but it's very small, and he lives in a ratty apartment. So, yeah. Now, Nico came in part to get away from some bad situations in Eastern Europe. He maybe owed the wrong people some money. There, there are things there, but, and it, you know, he comes to America. This is very much the identity of this game, an Eastern European hopeful, you, you know, U.S. immigrant. He, he goes to America hoping to get to a better place, build a better life, but finds that America is, it can be a very harsh, place. A lot of people don't make it. And he gets involved with the wrong people in Liberty City and in the game you're not so much working to take over the city, you know, to be the most powerful as you are in, you know, a lot of the, you know, that's part of the thing with Grand Theft Auto. You're working your way to the top of organized crime. Here it's just to get by. And he does have to work for bigger and more important organized crime figures as the game goes on, but he's not taking over, he's just getting by. And he did maybe also come to America with a certain goal in mind. And I suppose that pretty well covers the plot. Before I get into anything negative here, I just want to underline, I do love these games. I love this franchise. And before I get into anything negative also, I really want to talk about the positives because the positives are really great. The multiplayer is probably the biggest positive here. Basically, it takes place in the, the city, in Liberty City, and depending of course on the game mode and the host and such, you might be looking at, it. basically, there might be NPCs, there might be cars, some of them driven by NPCs, there might be cops, respray shops. It's basically the same as single player with some of the deeper features removed. And while that can be said of, you know, other recent multiplayer, you know, many of the ones I've played, which is nowhere near all of them, you know, the thing about you can do in multiplayer what you can in single player, and so can the other players, so watch out. This one actually goes, you know, one step beyond. This 
in multiplayer. This is as chaotic, open, and crazy as the single player, at, you know, when it is those, which of course not all the time. This offers a server list with filters. I cannot, the, the importance of such cannot be exaggerated. There are way too many recent games that don't allow that. If you get into, if you find a four card or four people can be in that. Th this goes for single player as well, but in multiplayer you can literally have several cars going up against each other with as many people in them as there are seats in the car. They can all be shooting at each other. Now, and with the, you know, there, there are also a number of Mexican standoffs in this, with just everybody fighting each other, very frantic at, at times. I did encounter some lag, not that often. And the, and I should also mention the, the in single player, to enter a car as a passenger, you just hold down the enter a car, enter a vehicle button. So there's no, you know, you're not struggling to activate that feature. And the, the game plays a lot like a typical multiplayer game, but it's in Grand Theft Auto. In multiplayer, you don't move as slow as you do in single player. I'll get more into that. You, you customize your character yourself, and there are sometimes as much as many as 13 parts to each body part, and I think around eight different body parts. So, yeah, there are dozens of different options there. You have a male model, a female model, even a zombie. No shirt, no sh no pants, no service. He even moans when he gets hurt and the like. Unlike Max Payne 3, though, you don't really get like separate groups and gangs, you know, to, to skin, and thus there is less personality and identity to the, the multiplayer characters, and you also can't play as the single player characters in this, which, you know, you wouldn't necessarily expect to, but I do think it's worth noting. The, it, it plays a lot like a classic first person or third person, you know, multiplayer experience with deathmatch, team deathmatch. You don't choose a loadout, the, the server can, but you basically, you go around the map and you pick up guns and they glow. One of the few video, very overtly video game-like aspects here and they are also marked on the GPS. As I said, the, the host does set some guns. Typically, it's a pistol and or an SMG. You earn money in the in the multiplayer, so in part you're earning by you know doing tasks or killing and or killing other players. But there's also you know cash might be dropped when a player is dead, and it's like, do you want to go? for that, you know, as well as looting his, you know, his corpse for gun, you know, ammo kind of thing. Or do you want to, you know, is it too risky to go for that? Now, the, the, the multiplayer does not have a lot of bells and whistles to it. You don't get to upgrade anything. There are no special abilities. There are both player matches and ranked matches. And ranked matches, the, you, you go up in rank, up to level 10, and you do this by earning cash. In theory, I was not able to play rank, a ranked match because there were no servers for it. Basically, there were, yeah, the, the few servers I found were essentially empty and still in lobby. And we are talking like one or two, you know, at best, and numerous days with no servers whatsoever. Player servers, however, there are, you know, maybe a dozen or so servers per day. Now, there are about 12 different maps, and they're nicely diverse. They're, you know, the docks, a prison, 
And not only are these considerable chunks of the Liberty City, one of them literally is the entire city. Some of the fun you can have in multiplayer here is playing chicken with or without a vehicle, with or without an RPG. Like, a quick example would be I was on a motorcycle riding towards the guy standing in the street with an RPG. He's moving slow because he's got the RPG and that's kind of what he's hoping for, you know, getting me with. I'm swerving and such just to avoid being hit with the RPG whilst firing my SMG at him to try to take him out. That's a lot of fun. That's and and it happens entirely organically. It's not like you have to, you know, chat with the other players and set up, hey, let's play chip. It happens completely organically. Now regardless of the game mode, it typically is a good idea to kill the enemy. You sometimes respawn very close. Though I think the, the host can set that re respawn distance. Sometimes you respawn very close to where you died, which can lead to very long shootouts where you know you might die, but then you come back. And maybe you can shoot the guy who killed you because you know, he maybe wounded him, and then another guy can come back into it. So, yeah. Are you getting the idea of just how frantic and crazy the multiplayer can get? The there can be more than two teams. I it is worth noting about five percent of the matches I played did have hackers in them. So yeah, be aware. Now the unlike a lot of recent you know, games I've played. Multiplayer is not the only place that the game challenges you, although it is more challenging. Again, other human players, and they can do what you can do. You can go pretty much anywhere you can in Singular, even some of the, you know, inside. You can even go inside some buildings. Now, when there are cops around, it does make it very, difficult to tell the you know the other players on your GPS. But yes, the you can be wanted in multiplayer and several players can be wanted at the same time, but at the same time not necessarily every player will be wanted. If you're not committing a crime near the cops, they're not gonna they're not gonna care. They don't like automatically take down every single, you know, player. But if you do start committing crimes, they're going to target you as well. And, yeah, you can get all the way up to, you know, six in wanted level, and there can be, let's say, half a dozen players all wanted by the cops at the same time. So, yeah, that's a lot of fun. Now, the... It's also worth noting, unlike in Max Payne 3, two players can kill each other at the same time, even if one of them isn't using an explosive of some kind. And I was never shot around a corner that I clearly turned when, you know, magic bullet or whatever. Okay, I'm done playing Max Payne 3. I finally got all the achievements. This might be the last time that I criticize that game in the review of it different game. Although I would say my defense, this game is, you know, connected to, it's all connected. The, the same basic developers, you know. Now, it's, it's really great in this how the players get to set the rules. They're not set in stone before you enter multiplayer match. Again, something that way too few multiplayer games today have. And this is one that really allows for a lot of customization for, you know, yeah, a lot of rules to fiddle around with for multiplayer matches. If you drive through a healing, a uh, health kit in multiplayer, the car you're in might be healed as well, which 
Yeah, that's cool. Now, the, the separate modes to play. The most open one is easily free mode, which also has a variety called party mode, which is in invitation only. Basically, there's no objective. And yeah, you can you can do what you want. You can organize, you know, specific you know, if you find some players on a free mode server that want to do the same thing you want to do, you can do that or you can just run around. You know, I personally I used it a lot for just training with the helicopter. Which yeah, that's worth noting. Literally any vehicle that's in single player might also appear in multiplayer. In fact, sometimes even at the same time, the the airport is always going to have helicopters. Basically, again, unless the host specifies not to have them. Now, you of course have deathmatch and team deathmatch. Mafia work, which also comes in the team variety. You get simple missions like escort, transport, kill. And every player can try, the, attempt these, and some of them, if you survive for several missions in a row, you may end up with a really good car, some specifically really good guns, even, excuse me, even an, excuse me, even an AI ally, which, you know, again, one or more of these if you survive and if those are the missions that you complete. There's one called Carjack City, which also has a team Orion. Cars spawn randomly around the map, and you have to steal them and then drop off at specific places. And some of them contain drugs, and others, the better the state they're in, the more, the more money you get. And you can shoot the other players cars so yeah that's that's all hint cops and crooks where you depending on the team you either defend and you know escort to a car or you try to kill the dawn of a mob or just a or just fellow players in general I think it's been a little while since I played that one turf war and you know, team with it's basically capture the base domination kind of thing. Race, of course, and yeah, basically a car, motorcycle, helicopter. You get to choose between a couple of different models that you know the host decides the overall like supercars or motorcycles or the like and you get to choose the color and it's then checkpoint racing and you can choose to respawn at the most recent covered checkpoint. Now the GGA race version, everything I just said plus guns and you get to steal cars either from other players or from AI. And and then there are three co-op levels as well. Now, the game has a lot of new features. You can go on the internet and set up dates or check email. You can watch TV. You can use... The, the cell phone is a great new addition. You can, you know, make or receive calls. Anyone... Pretty much every major character you meet is added to your contact list, and you can then contact each other. You can call them pretty much any time you want. It's not, you know, depending on the time and the situation, the conversation will play out a certain way and the like. And you can, you know, a number of them are your friends, and you can earn favors from them by you know, increasing how much they like you. And, you know, this might, this includes, you know, getting your cheap guns in a, in a certain area, calling in for a couple of goons to help you, these kinds of things. Now, the, 
you know, you might also be cold and yeah, these these friends might will call you and ask, you know, let's go out and I just like call me on my cell. Don't they know how to text? OMG. The pedestrian behavior is more varied, more realistic. You can use a taxi to explore. You can hail it just, you know, walking in the street if you see a taxi, hail it. You can have them hurry along. The game has no load times and very few cuts. Like, you can go from inside to outside and vice versa, and you will be able to tell very much, like, the amount of a light that, you know, whether it's during the night or during the day, the amount of light is obviously, you know, yeah, the, the color of the sky will be much clearer when you're outside. So when you go inside, you know, the moment you clear the door, clearly there's less of the outside, you know, light or lack of light. And it feels very realistic. It's not jarring. And yeah, low, you know, cuts. Basically, when you use an elevator, cut scenes, shopping for clothes and the like, that's about it. Otherwise, anything you do just yeah happens in one long. So so it feels more like you're actually in charge, and it's actually you. This is very much a reboot, so there's not. There are basically no cameos, although Laszlo returns, which there would be riots in the streets if Laszlo did not. So, yeah, but it's it's this is this started its own separate continuity. The military has been replaced by Homeland Security, and they come in, in these heavily armored cars wearing Kevlar. Yeah, they're and obviously more armed. They're a force to be reckoned with. Now, the for you know, whenever you go on a mission, you you know you have to plan for it and prepare. You know, gather armor, gather weapons and ammo, and you have to go in and really apply yourself in order to accomplish it. And you may have to get lucky as well, and at least some really hard won victories that you remember. This was also always true of Breath of Dawn, but it's sadly less so here. Now, the AI is fine, not, yeah. Fire hydrants, if you, if you knock over a fire hydrant, the water that sprays out will literally you know, that's that's a considerable spray. If if a car hits it or a person or the like, they might be, you know, lifted up in the air by this. That's a bit fun. There's a toll bridge where basically you you can slow down and pay the toll or you can drive right through it and that'll attract some police attention. And this is obviously, you know, yeah, are you in a hurry, or are you trying to stay secret, or is it somewhere in between? You make that decision. Now, this does require both the Rockstar Social Club and Games for Windows Live. Personally, I haven't had... I haven't had that many problems with either, and certainly not while I played this. And I should also say, this took me five minutes to install, but that's also because I already had those installed. From what I can tell, the people who had a lot of trouble with this, basically, they, you know, it was their first Rockstar Social Club and or game, Games for Windows Live game. Yeah, if that's the case, you might have some trouble with that. And certainly, all this or D DMR, D D yeah, obnoxious. You can call 911 on your cell. You can access the police database. If, if, you, if you're in a cop car, it's parked, you can access the police database. And this is how you get the vigilante missions, some of which will be timed as per usual. 
some of them not. And basically, you can look up, I think, basically every major character in the game, you know, see what their rap sheet is and such, yeah. Now... I think that pretty much brings us to the negatives. I didn't want to... I, did, I don't want to say anything negative about this. I, I love these games, and I always hate to have to say bad things about them, but I... In these reviews, I really want to give a full... I, d I don't want to leave anything out, positive or negative. So brace yourselves. Picking up items and the like is slow and often non-responsive. And this might sound like, oh, it's not too big a deal. This is sometimes vital for missions. You're going over, you're trying to pick something up, you press the button several times, Nico just walks back and forth, doesn't do it, you're, you're too close, you're too far away. This is, there is no reason for it to be this bad. No reason, no excuse. There are a lot of awkward elements in general. When you aim at, at an enemy, you, you often get like this you know, health display. It'll also show if, like, if the guy's wearing Kevlar and such. But even though he's right in your sights and you can see the health thing, you might still hit a wall if you're too close to it. A lot like Max Payne 3. Now, there are a lot less, there's a lot less character customization than there was in San Andreas. In general, this is very much, this removes a ton of what was in San Andreas. In general, this removes a lot of beloved mechanics. It's the Assassin's Creed 3 of Grand Theft Auto sequels. The, when, when you, you, you can use the subway now and it'll basically have this, actually it's been a while since, I think it was the, just the, the what's it called, the CCTV camera, and you can, whenever you're in a vehicle, you can engage the cinematic camera, which is either by clicking or holding, and, you know, and there are three different distances of, you know, of the third person view behind. Now, you often have to shoot and or aim at a driver to make them stop the car. It's, yeah, quite annoying. Via platforms and ladders, there are a number of buildings you can climb, some in multiplayer as well. You can get drunk and drive drunk, and it's, it's quite nicely you know, simulated with the drunk. You know, visual filters, the, the controls will be less responsive. I can make a joke there, but I won't. You can do races, you know, there are assassination missions, taxi missions, energy yeah, the, the ambulance, pizza delivery, firefighting, those are gone. One nice thing, thing here is that you can do as many or as few as you like, and the, the amount of money you make from it will be proportional. Now, when you're on, when you're chasing someone, you know, on foot, in a car, there are also rooftop chases in this. You can often cut it short just by shooting them, which is very awkward. And then at the same time, there are times where clearly they don't want you to shoot, but you have to figure that out by you know, firing at them and then realizing I'm not doing any damage by this. I guess I should just wait for, you know, it's always awkward when a mission has you trying to accomplish and then you realize, oh, I just, I have to do this. That's, yeah. The, the mini games are meh at best. You can go bowling, play pool, play darts. You're basically harassed by your friends for, you know, this kind of activity. And 
there is a quick fix, but you really shouldn't have to engage in a quick fix. Excuse me. Now the basically there there are a lot of things you can do in this game, but they don't do very much. Like in San Andreas, most of what you can do outside of missions actually affect you. Know, you can build muscle or get fat. You know, you can yeah, there, there are a number of things there you can do that actually affect the overall, and here it's basically just life simulation where I realize that these games have been increasingly you know letting you do things that you can also do in real life but that's really not here it kind of takes over and personally I've always found that it's less that aspect is a lot less important, a lot less compelling than the the actual gameplay. Now there are a number of moral choices. At first it didn't seem like there were that many, but they rack up over the course of the game and these change the outcome of the story. And this might be something like kill or spare this guy. And yeah. You you might get double crossed, you change side over the course of the game. The the plot is fairly repetitive. Often you kill someone you shouldn't and then you face consequences at the hands of their allies, usually meaning you work for them. And contacts often end up in jail or die. And again, this happens a lot. And often this happens before you really get to know them. The missions often feel like mundane chores. I found the plot only really got good about halfway through, and the plot at times isn't much of a Grand Theft Auto plot. This does go into the, the ruthless nature of capitalism. To an extent, this almost isn't, or at least it's less of a Grand Theft Auto game, because iconic elements are toned down in favor of a more serious plot. Grit does not have to equal boredom. Now, The emails provide background about the characters and such. Several missions will be about the same overall thing, such as dealing with stolen diamonds. And there's some elements of classic tragedy. You know, you basically outlook not so good. You know, you can tell that something bad is going to happen at some point, and you you are powerless to avert this. Some people have pointed out that Nico sounds somewhat like Shrek. Yeah, that's a little funny. He's very sarcastic, but he does also help out, you know, some for money and some for, you know, friends and such. Now, the among the radio stations here are, you know, among the hosts are Opie and Anthony. Do not get them started on Bill Maher. And this doesn't really go into Anthony's fondness for taking completely innocuous pictures of construction and vans. The casting is quite good. Some, some have pointed to this doesn't really have any celebrities the way, you know, the other games, you know, yeah. It, the, the characters are quite substantial, so the, you know, the, yeah, you're, you're not going into it thinking, oh, this 
actor is going to bring this or that to the character. So, yeah, it's. I'm not saying either is better than the other, but they're both good. Now, the Nico is emotionally unstable, and a lot of the time, the way that he behaves and reacts is not the way that we behave and react, and it just it disconnects the player from the protagonist, which is not a good thing, and it's not like deeply distraught characters have not been done well, you know, case in point being Kane from Kane and Lynch, especially the first one. At one point you work for a guy named Faustin, because subtlety is not a city in Serbia. There are a lot of the hard, hardened and broken people in this by war or crime, you know, a lot of different ethnicities. Everyone's going to have a, their own favorite character. Me, I love Brucey. Basically, he's this martial artist, you know, steroid junkie. He never sits still. Like, when you meet him, he's always doing some kind of exercise or martial arts moves out in the air and just, yeah, he's, he's a lot of fun. There's some good, the, the relationship between Roman and Nico, these cousins, is quite good. There's some conflict, you know, Nico feels like he was tricked into America, and Roman doesn't agree with everything Nico, you know, thinks and does, and such. Among the gangs and such in this, there's a biker gang, a Russian mafia, you know, Italian mafia, Irishman, and someone really should have told you, never give an Irishman cause for revenge. The various characters would co comment on, you know, life stuff, plot, you know, events and such. The the current mission, you know, when you're driving around places or when you hang out with them, when you call them, these kinds of things. There's a replay video editor. The controls are not streamlined. There are way too many separate keys to keep track of. I have no idea why the cell phone has completely separate controls from basically the, you know, when you have the cell phone out, you can't shoot, you can't enter a car. Why not just use some of these same keys for the cell phone instead of you suddenly having to completely, you know, go and use separate keys. And this happens during other parts as well. You know, accept on the cell phone is the same as buying something. Again, why not just have, you know, a separate key, the use key, the, the inner vehicle key. You're never, when you're shopping, you're not in a vehicle. Why not just use you know, in a vehicle for that. Now, the some elements of this are Max Payne three level bad. Although, you know, for example, walking and such, they're never worse than when Max Payne three level. That would be hard. I said I might stop. I didn't say I'm, I might stop before the end of this video. And basically, with that said, they are worse than other Grand Theft Auto games, and Just Cause, and if, you know, I don't think the second one had come out, but I'm pretty sure the first one had, and yeah, there are elements in that. There are elements that are better in that than in this. Chew on that one for a while. Now, there is a lot of content here. Uh, most of it is an interactive, it's, again, life simulation. And a lot of the interactive stuff is as bad or worse. And that was really, I mean, that's kind of something that we've just accepted over the years. That's, Grand Theft Auto is a lot of fun, the franchise, and offers a lot. But it does also, you know, controls and shooting and these things. 
sometimes really need work. With San Andreas, they had gotten a lot of things very right, and then in this one, they do away with a lot of that. Now, it's quite nice that when, when it rains, like NPCs will bring out umbrellas, the cops will wear those, you know, raincoat things, you know, characters, including Nico, if, if he stands still for a little bit, he'll like shake and, you know, yeah, look, as you do when you're in the rain, not wearing, you know, appropriate clothing. The sprint key, you can now both hold or you can tap it to increase how fast you sprint. That's a good addition slash change. Satire is quite clever, thought-provoking, and it targets everyone equally, which is quite nice. You know, you have perverts, you have, you know, castrating Radfin, Radfin feminists for uninitiated. That was everything. Apologies. Hipsters, reality television, you know, drugs, corruption, sex, money. There's a phony psychic. Healthcare is brought up, of course. You know, ads, shows, signage, logos, and slogans. Yeah, puns and or, you know, offensive stereotyping. Yeah, there's a lot of that. Of course, it is unfortunate that because of how aggressively the Republicans move toward the right. This game no longer really parodies them, but rather represents them. Now, the, the world is simply not that inviting, nor does it offer very fluid gameplay. The PC version, and only the PC version, on Metacritic, has a lot of low ratings, about half as many as high ratings. There's a lot of modding going on for this game. In Soviet Russia, GTA 4 plays you. Technically, you can go to Jersey in this. You have three main islands, and the skyline has some very iconic New York landmarks. The city is smaller, but it's also more detailed. Now, you, you have to explore and memorize the city before you go on a mission, as part of preparation mentioned earlier. The, the various sections of the city are somewhat distinct, but they're also fairly similar. It's all urban. And again, San Andreas, you had the, you know, you had this big desert area, for example, the forest stuff between the, the city stuff. Now, I feel like I didn't really hammer home the point about being called on the cell phone for, you know, by the friends. It gets really obnoxious. There were, there were points where, literally right after, I had, you know, been with one of the friends, another one would call me up. You know, it, it it's a lot like dating, which was also in San Andreas. You, you know, pick them up, you go to a place, you know, you go to the place, you maybe choose the place, and, yeah, the, I mean, it just, it gets really annoying, them constantly calling you up. I mean, I don't want a friend of mine to call me up asking, can we play pool when I'm busy disposing of a body? Why would I want it in a video game? Now, the, the physics are greatly improved. Again, you know, not so many interactive, but definitely stuff has been improved and there's more content here. This is the first of them to have ragdoll physics, dynamic lighting, water physics, uh, you know, object physics. You know, objects will have a real weight to them. You can swim, but not underwater. I like with San Andreas, basically water is no longer a problem for you at all, pretty much, which, again, 
I'm glad it's not instant death like it used to be, but yeah, the fact that it's now completely, it doesn't kill you at all, basically, it's not, that's not the way you should go, basically. It's, it's fairly common in these open world games, either water is instant death, or it just doesn't kill you at all, no matter what. Now, the, the world is fairly open, not too reined in. The, the laws of the engine and the laws of the police control it somewhat. But yeah, you have a lot of freedom with still consequences. Now, and a minute of real time is an hour of in-game time. If you die, you go to a hospital, or you respawn at a hospital. Losing 10% of your cash, of the cash you have on you at the time, you know, with at, at a maximum of 10,000. 10, if you're caught, you lose all your guns and ammunition. But if you load an autosave, excuse me, you won't lose anything and, excuse me, if you have it enabled, you autosave every time you've completed a mission, I think also just when you, yeah, for, for various situations, so, yeah. Which again, I mean, one of the really great things in these games is that there really are consequences. It's, it's open, but it still has consequences. So this takes away some of that. You can still store cars in safe houses. It's not a garage anymore, it's just a parking, you know, yeah, parking spot. When you save, you sleep for six hours, you know, in in game time. And even if there were cops at the time, they won't I mean, in the in the games before this one, if you save, the cops would still be out there. You could then just load and they would Forget about you, which, yeah. Now, when you say they literally forget all about you, so you know, no six in the morning situation here. You can still vault. Nico runs like he is severely obese. It's, yeah, it's ridiculous how slow he moves. When you, you know, when you drive a car, if you do like a hard, hard brake, the you know the characters in the car will move like you can practically feel the whiplash from yeah and if you you know run straight into you know the is that thing of you know an unstoppable force and immovable object in this game it it move it means that you fly through the windshield and not only you this can happen to other you know if you slam hard enough into an npc vehicle they might go flying and it's really fun you know, and the camera of course follows you as you fly out it's it's a lot of fun it, it's again you know some consequence so yeah and you know if when you run someone over they, they'll kind of bounce off the hood, yeah, very realistically. Again, as I may have already said, the engines here are all better, but the gameplay isn't necessarily. You can shimmy along ledges. Shoving open doors or shoving away people is awkward both in look and feel, which is actually something that apparently they weren't happy with what it looked like in the other games. <sighs> yeah, I'd say it's more awkward here. Now, unlike Max Payne 3, you never, you know, Nico never sticks in a direction, direction you're sending him in. Now, the animations are very realistic and apparently created as you're playing. It's not just pre-programmed for motion capture. There's a lot of detail. The graphics are great. The cutscenes are quite good with you know, different angles, cuts, and they tend to be skippable. 
you have a 360 degree camera at most times. When you aren't on foot, the camera moves annoyingly and you have to readjust it yourself. This was something where, yeah, this, in, in San Andreas, if you didn't touch the mouse when you were driving, you were fine. This is the first game where you literally have to have a hand constantly on the mouse, constantly readjusting as you're driving or you know flying or sailing. Now the map has zoom legend. You can even place your own marker, which can coexist peacefully with marker the game set itself. Some longtime fans of the franchise hate this game. Some of them also experienced lag. I didn't personally. The, the city is somewhat gray and blurry. It's, it's realistic enough to New York, but we play games in part for escapism. It should be nicer. Now, by many accounts, this is a bad port from console. It, it ran well on my computer. On, on the low graphics setting, and I, you know, among the games that I run smoothly are Assassin's Creed 3 and Deus Ex Human Revolution. This has an engine built from scratch. Others have experienced crashes. Again, I didn't. The cinematic camera, if you're chasing someone and you hold down the cinematic camera, it might be it might only be in a vehicle, but yeah, it'll focus on that target. And multiplayer, in addition to cinematic camera, it'll also show the, the score, and if, you know, if there's an objective, it'll also show that. You can still look behind you at any time, and you can use that to center the view, you know, press it and then release it, and it's, you know, back to the third person. The, you know, icons on the map would be color-coded, red for kill, blue for, you know, help, and yellow for, you know, just a place to, to get to, or, yeah, and green for your own. The, the weather is fairly varied. You know, rain, sunny, fog, foggy, nighttime. You can turn on your high beams in case, you know, if you can't see that you reign supreme, that's what you better do. When you're stealing a car, if it's locked, you may have to, you know, break open a window to get in and, you know, with, you know, the old. Yeah. And, you know, if there's someone in there, you may have to threaten them out with, you know, if you've got a gun out, you can threaten them out. If, you know, if not, you might just pull them out, you know, otherwise force them out. If the guy's dead, you literally will just kind of roll him out of the car. Yeah. Now, if you look up at something off in the distance, the perspective focus will kind of pull out to, yeah, quite nice effect. Teeth really stick out, like when people talk, yeah, quite awkward. And that's one of the things that sometimes happen when you go for really realistic, yeah, the, the slight imperfections can really stick out in, in that situation. You can hang on to most vehicles, but you tend to fall pretty quickly, you know, if it's moving. You can't, you know, there are no planes for you to, there are no planes you can use, there's no military, there are no bicycles. Flying is still bad, but it is the same as in San Andreas, so, you know, you can apply what you learned there. You do have to fly a little bit to complete the game, which Again, I would prefer if something like that, something that suddenly very 
challenging and frustrating was just, you know, something you could also do, but at least it's only a little. And unlike San Andreas, this doesn't force you through a poorly done, you know, tutorial flying school kind of thing, where you just learn how to pass the tests instead of actually learning how to fly and such. You learn to fly once you pass the tests, once you get to play around with it. Here, like I said, in free mode, in multiplayer, you can fly as, you know, you might, your airspace might be challenged by some of the others, but yeah, otherwise you, you can. Now, but yeah, my, my problem with it remains that flying is much more involved than driving a car, when in real life, yes, flying is more difficult than driving a car, but driving a car also takes effort, and you should go with none of, you know, neither of those or both of those. You can't just, you know, easy driving and difficult flying. And this is, again, just cause does it right. Now, you know, in that, flying is basically as easy as driving, although you do have to, you know, flying will still happen by the laws of, you know, when you fly a helicopter, it's not the same as driving a car. It's just that the controls are the same, and it's essentially as easy. It still takes some getting used to, of course. Now, in the helicopter, the military ones have dual miniguns, and, of course, limited ammo. It's a Grand Theft Auto game, so, yeah, that's quite good. There are always planes taken off at the airport, and you can't block them or stop them by blowing them up. What do you mean, why would I try that? It's a Grand Theft Auto game, of course I'm going to try. Now, the... When it comes to shooting from a vehicle, sometimes the, you know, your ally, you know, AI, won't do it even when you really want him to. Sometimes he will continue to do it when you really... You, know, you can't tell him, stop, I'm trying to outrun the police. Don't antagonize them, don't shoot at them. Yeah, because you know, he might shoot at anyone who shoots at you, and of course the police are gonna shoot at you. You know, if you're trying to get away and, yeah. Now, the, the aiming with the 360 degree free camera is very smooth. You can turn the car 360 degrees without ever losing your, you know, your aim on, and, you know, yeah. With that, so, that, that, that gives you a lot of opportunities, and that's one place where the, the camera is amazing. Now, the, and from a car, it's not only an SMG, you can also fire a pistol or a throwable. You can even cycle through them in the car or vehicle. There's some bad handling, and I would say it's worse than in you know earlier Grand Theft Auto games. You know, skidding. You know, it's, it might be slow to respond. And as I mentioned earlier, you may have to draw out a gun to get you know an NPC to stop the car. The brakes might be slow to respond for all the AI or something because they all run you over, even the cops. And they'll like, they'll stop right after they ran you over, but you really have to be like several feet ahead of them or again drawing out a gun, at which point they might just try to draw, drive off. So that's really annoying. And constantly being run over by everyone. I know it's New York, but you don't have to be that realistic. Cars also bounce at nothing and go flying or flip over at just, yeah, the tiniest little bump in the road and such. You can now bail from vehicle in motion, but there is fall damage even when it's just, you know, the car and you just do some rolls, so yeah, that's quite nice. And it's not necessarily a lot of damage, but yeah. At one point, at several points, my car broke down without necessarily blowing up, you know, and you can, you know, the radio stops and, 
you know, you can try. And Nico would be like, come on, come on, you know, trying to start the car back up. But yeah, there are boats, cars, helicopters, and motorcycles in this. Too often, you'll enter the wrong car or none at all. And this is regardless of how close you are to the vehicle, regardless of you might be facing, you might be right at the door. He'll still run around to the other side of the vehicle, or he'll go for another vehicle that's several feet away. Or again, he might not respond at all. And this is again, there really isn't an excuse for this. You could just make it, you know, go in and aim, target the, the car door that you want to open, and then engage with that. There's just, yeah, it's, I, I get that, you know, I'm not saying it's easy to craft an engine for a game. I'm saying this is what they should go for when they craft an engine for a game. This is something that they should really apply, you know, a lot of their effort towards because it is so frustrating. You know, forget all the hours of television that you can watch, the cabaret shows, the, the stand-up comedians, all that radio content, the radio content maybe less so, but all of this stuff that's in there that, I feel like that would be fine to do as like DLC, that, you know, for the people who really care, but a lot of us just aren't going to go for that, and it's not that I don't want to get into the world of the game, but, yeah, it's, Again, a lot of content, a lot of it not interactive. Now, the weapons include a pistol, you know, pistols, so machine guns, shotguns, assault rifles, sniper rifles, a, gren a grenade, a Molotov, and, and a rocket, you know, an RPG walking to a bar. When it's a grenade, it never feels like the shell is made of wet paper. I told you it wasn't done with Max Payne 3. And nor do you roll it suddenly with terrible, you know, with the game deciding for you and having terrible instincts for that. Y you know, in this, if you don't focus aim, it will drop it at your feet, which can be useful, sure, but I don't really get why that's like the main thing that, yeah, this does make more sense when it's in a vehicle because then you're, you know, bombing the guy behind you and such, and you can indeed cook even in a vehicle, which you should be careful with because, you know, the, the oil might go everywhere. It's really bad. Nico even answers his cell phone while driving and can, like, read texts and all this stuff. So, yeah, that's... He's not the most responsible. I mean... The guy even drives drunk. Although he will say that he probably shouldn't, which, as others have noted, is interesting that that's the one time he feels like maybe this is wrong. You know, the, the killing and. Yeah. None of that. A lot of the guns here. Actually, yeah, all the guns. There's two, sometimes only one per type. That's, that's very little. You, you can crouch and strafe. You know, you can go for individual body parts of the target, although this does, this often knocks them down, which is really awkward when you then, you know, you're trying to finish them off and this kind of thing, and yeah, it's just, yeah, very, very awkward. It's, it can make it very easy to finish them off, but I, I mean, I could get it if, again, if they then did it for you as well, so you have to be really careful in, you know, not getting hit, but as it is, Basically, you you know you're knocking down one, then you're focusing your fire on another, and then the first guy's getting back up. Yeah, 
is another one of those things where I don't think they really thought it through. And again, I'm not saying that it's easy to make a game, but some of these things you try to address in pre-production. Now, I should say there's also explosives, a knife, and a bat among them. Yeah. If you're very close to a place where you can take cover and you press cover, Nico might roll or slide into cover. And from cover, you can blind fire. Cover, when a cover system is bad, it's bad. In this, you often end up just not using it unless you absolutely have to. You, when you hold down the aim button, he just kind of aims. He doesn't stick out the way good cover systems have you do. You have to hold down the, the fire button to fire. And yeah, when you're aiming and you're like, okay, that's this is the right time to shoot, you press half a second passes as he's turning out and getting ready to fire, and the guy ducks behind cover. Y yeah, this is why you often, you don't use it unless you absolutely have to. This is the same in, you know, when you're firing from a car. And the worst part is they fix it for when you're a passenger of a vehicle. So they knew how to do it. Now, the, the character is frankly too slow and heavy for a good cover system. Now, there are less guns and cars than in San Andreas. I don't remember if I've mentioned already, but you can indeed fire a weapon from a helicopter if you're the passenger. You know, the, the helicopter might have dual miniguns even if you're just playing. You, you know what? Don't think about why. Play train with the, the minigun in multiplayer. Do, thank me later, don't ask why. But but yeah, the yeah, you can indeed fire from a helicopter if you're a passenger and fire yeah, the, the various weapons. Now, unlike San Andreas, there is no, you know, role-playing game style upgrading of guns. It's very easy to get ammo for guns. I, you know, often just looting bodies. Again, in the other ones, I had to really count bullets and go and buy I barely bought any ammo in this. I bought a lot of armor, but hardly any ammo. You, yeah, you usually can get by just by, you know, not using the same gun constantly and, you know, yeah, looting bodies. I had barely got my hands on a pistol before I had hundreds of bullets for it. And the same goes for the SMG. It's just, it's way too easy. And there's also, very low recoil and impressive distance in this, even for a pistol. It's like the anti-IO interactive game. Now, there's an awkward pistol whip when you're too close to an enemy to fire. Gave me really, you know, I mean, this was bad back when it was in Hitman Sound Assassin, and that was six years before this game came out. Now, you can do sort of a an instant 180 degree turn by looking back and then pressing fire or aiming, because it'll, yeah, they're gonna turn. Sometimes you turn incredibly fast right after having fired a gun or the like. Yeah, that's, I don't quite know why it happens, so it and it happens very suddenly, so that can really mess you up. It's, it's especially bad when you're trying to snipe. This has the most unpredictable barrels, explosive barrels that I've ever seen. You can never tell if a barrel you're shooting at is actually going to blow up, if it'll ever blow up, and when it does blow up, it often barely 
has any effect. Like it might knock someone down without barely hurting them, or whilst barely hurting them with when they were right there. You know, as far as I can tell, you can't shoot limbs off in this one. And in general, it's just less bloody. And the humor is also toned down, and yeah, the characters are less out there. There's extra zoom when you know when you're focusing. You can zoom some extra manually. It'll never do it automatically, and of course the, the zoom will be proportional to the weapon you're using. Again, this is just the kind of thing where because it's manual and because it, yeah, it's just yeah. Wish they hadn't put it in. Whether you're in a car or not, you can, you know, kill through a car window with ease, you know, headshot. Whether you have to shoot through a car window, yeah, so that's quite nice. You may toss empty guns. I think I mostly experienced this in multiplayer because, again, single player, they were tossing ammo at me left and right. Now. When you are wanted, the you know the, the the GPS will show a marked marked search area, yeah, something like that, and it'll be bigger. Again, and the size will be proportional to the wanted level, and if you move outside of it, which of course means not being seen, because you know if there behind you and close to you and can see you, then the field will move as you move because, you know, they're moving. But if you get out of it, you know, then they won't be able to see you and you just have to hope that a different cop doesn't come in from, you know, from a different angle and suddenly spots you. And, yeah, once you're outside of that, they will, you know, you can you can wait until they forget about you basically. At times it can be really easy to escape from the cops in this. And the the cops will respond you know, the the force they use in response to your crimes again proportional, which is completely unrealistic. The you know, when they're trying to disarm you, you can try to break free. And you can be on more than one mission at the same time in, you know, for some of the missions in this. Sometimes you have to wait for days for a call or for the time of an appointment to come by. Now, I kind of wish that they would, uh, there was at least one mission where I was, you know, I knew the appointment I had the time, you know, the cell comes with an organizer, but it only set the time, not the place. I eventually just went to the the email, the internet, and found the you know the company of the people I had an appointment with, and looked up the address under like you know contact or something, and then you know when when I got there, an hour before the appointment, it did put it on the map, but. If I was very far away on the map, I mean, again, one hour in-game time is a minute in real life, so it might completely screw you over. Now, and that, of course, also means you have to be careful about how much time you spend on other missions, and whether you, you know, sleep in the safe house, you know, if you get killed or caught by the cops, it also fast forward the time. Now, the mission objectives will be, you know, kill, transport, steal, chase. Maybe you are chased. You know, putting in time limit. Time limit. Maybe you have to keep the car in one piece to, you know, mix it up. It still feels really repetitive. It's usually. You know, too too often you're sent somewhere and then you kill someone. Not even, you know, 
never even in a stealthy way, which again was a fun aspect of some of the Now, the missions tend to be over scripted. The final one has made dedicated players give up. And I, personally, I think I got really lucky. I didn't have a lot of trouble with it. Now, and I will say, it's not as epic as the Sun Andreas one, but it's, it's pretty cool. Now, when, whenever you fail a mission, you get text message to retry, and basically that means you don't have to go back to the mission source. In the, the contact or whatever, and it can be really useful if you fail several times in a row because you might, after failing, be sent back to the basic area of, you know, where you start the mission. And when you get the text, you just press, yes, I do want to try the mission again, and then you don't even have to go very far to try the mission again. Still does not have mid, you know, mid-mission checkpoints, yeah, that gets really frustrating. Now, the early tutorials are unbelievably repetitive, and in part it's probably because there are too many features, and they tend to cover just one per tutorial. So it's a lot of really short missions where you're told, do one thing, and then that mission is over, and then you get another one, and it's just, yeah. The the outcome of a mission is often very predictable. I mean, if you're sent, you know, just watch all this being obvious that someone's going to try to kill someone else and you have to, you know, engage in a gunfight. Yeah. Sometimes you'll get a picture, you know, sent to you on the cell phone, which can help you out. You know, find a contact, find a target. Some missions even have health packs and armor along the way, which, yeah, they're, they're trying to make it too easy, or, yeah, they're trying to make it easy for you, and, yeah. A lot of missions I really couldn't tell apart, and this is the first Grand Theft Auto that had really meh mission design. Now, there are times when you have to listen in on a conversation to find the target of a mission. Sometimes this is even a cell phone call. And I mean, if recent, you know, cinema PSAs have taught me anything, is that when someone talks on their cell phone in the wrong place, you gotta kill them. Now, in order to do well in this game, you have to learn and master several skills, including shooting, you know, driving flying and the like. It's open world, but with realistic limitations. Now, the game took me 33 hours to complete, which, is, you know, the third game took me 36, some of took me 33 and a half, and then I kept playing until I had 64.71% completion. That took me 74 hours. Personally, I don't think I'm gonna be playing this after you know, I mean, I record this right after I've completed it. There are just too many frustrating aspects to it. And after a while in this, I start sleepwalking through the missions, and just, yeah, it was, yeah. And then at times there's also the Grand Theft Auto trademarked frustrating uneven difficulty, which is all the more frustrating now because the game is otherwise relatively easy. Easier than some address. I thought that one went too easy. Now, nevertheless, there is a fair amount of chance. It's, it's not an Assassin's Creed game. Now, you can now skip your own MP3s, and there's even, it's, it's hosted, the, you know, now the music is, you know, there's a lot of licensed music by famous artists. And there are three talk radio stations. The different radio stations include Latin, reggae, 
electro, you know, hip hop, soul, R&B, indie rock, hardcore, yeah. And like in San Andreas, the tracks are held separately and sequenced randomly, making song order and announcements, you know, different, each, you know, yeah, allowing them to be different and plot events can be, you know, talked about on the radio. Now, I'm, and there's something I like on every single radio station. This goes into the theme of revenge and explores it fairly nicely. In closing, there are times where you really get into this, the plot, the characters, the setting, and then that dies from the TV shooting and repetitive gameplay. Again, the, the main plus here is the multiplayer. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.